Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 0.25. In this episode I had originally intended to uh, launch a space tug, a uh, tug that would transfer payloads from Kerbin orbit to lunar orbit and in fact I had already recorded an intro about that and unlocked the, the claw which will be uh, very important for moving payloads, not, not just payloads but spent stages around and perhaps bringing some of the stages that we have in orbit around the moon back to Kerbin for instance or making use of them somehow but in the course of building my space tug I realized that there were some key technologies that I needed to unlock that I had not already one was I really wanted the horizontal radial winch uh, so these radial winches uh, I simply did not have access to and uh, all I have is the inline winches and so that was a little bit of a problem I, I, I would like uh, all sorts of other things including larger docking ports was uh, was an issue because we need to build an earth station uh, in order to supply the tug with its fuel and to build the earth station we need the large docking ports uh, aside from that there were there's also the RTG that I would have liked and also the large solar panels, the Gigantor XL solar arrays. So I want all these things and uh, in the end what I decided was that I would restart this episode and make the goal getting some science because <laughs> clearly we need more science to unlock all these technologies. With that in mind uh, we could just do more missions to Minmus which uh, you know is the typical science farming method or more interestingly, we could try and fulfill some contracts. So let's go to go to the contract screen and see what contracts we can pick up in order to get large amounts of science. So here we are. Let's take a look at what active contracts we have. Uh, science data from space around the moon doesn't give us much actual science. Plenty of time to fulfill it. This one gives us 206 science, so we got to do this one. So testing that engine cluster in flight over Kerbin. That'll be the first one, I think. And then this one, which I've been delaying, but we should probably do in this episode, is uh, testing the large engine uh, on Minmus, landed at Minmus. It'll be a trick to come up with, uh, with a craft to do that, but I'll, I'll, I'll do that. I've already got it uh, in my queue. But let's see what else we've got here. Uh, test uh, LFB in flight over Kerbin. It's only 48. Let's see uh, anything. Oh, that's 112. Uh, test the structural pylon. Activate the part you, through... How do you activate a structural pylon through... St uh, I guess... Is it activatable during staging? Well, anyway, uh, that seems pretty easy. Okay, and a turbojet in flight over Kerbin. Okay. The others don't give enough science to justify them. Alright, so I'll start with this one and then just work my way down. Okay, so here's a really strange test article for this. And the reason it's strange is because I have a limit on my procedural tanks. The procedural tank cannot extend to more than 3 meters. I don't know when we get out of that limitation. But uh, so for now, I couldn't even stretch it to beyond this. I could have cheated. I could have scaled this down, but I didn't think that would be fair. So I left it at its uh, normal scale, which also meant a lot of parachutes. Probably needs some more batteries. And uh, I needed throttleable engines, so it had to be these. And so, yeah, not too much choice on too many of these things. Probably get one of those on there too. Okay, it's a bit expensive, but we'll bring it all back down. So we'll just call this test one. Okay, let's try it out. Somebody had mentioned fine print, and I'll try to remember to add that in, in the, for the next episode. 
and I'll also want to add something to make the contract window look right. I think there's a mod for that if fine print itself doesn't do it. Now let me see if I can time warp to daylight without it uh, taking all my electric charge. Okay, let's try this. Should be interesting. I don't really need smart ASS. I would rather have the contract open. Okay, and uh, here we go. Obviously part of the complication is the fact that uh, we we need to activate this engine at altitude, not here. I would like to keep it below Mach, so let's stroll down a bit. I don't want uh, far getting too interested in how I've attached these things. Okay, engine shut down. All conditions are met. Test complete. I'm gonna shut down this engine. And we're gonna head back down. Okay, I think uh, we can use the parachutes now. if it decides to no no pressure uh, I mean that in all possible ways okay seriously can we get those parachutes no, I guess not. Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. we got the science right yeah we got the science that's the important part I'll figure out what to do about this some other time okay uh, yep let's just pretend that didn't happen and continue why didn't the parachutes deploy though I mean maybe I shouldn't uh, pretend that didn't happen I mean excessive heat well that, that was later on right I mean we weren't going very fast Okay, anyway, uh, Space Center. Okay, so I guess we destroyed our astronaut complex, which is now out of service. Um, okay, well, let's just continue with tests. We're not doing any manned tests or anything. Uh, we'll worry about that later. We've got the funds to repair it if necessary, but maybe we'll be destroying other things, so... Okay, well, first building destroyed in, uh, in uh, KSP.25. Very interesting. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, what we have here is is a tribute to Kerbal Insanity. We are going to test the Kerbidine KR2L advanced engine on the surface of Minmus like this. Uh, I could bring it back. We've got the Delta V to bring it back, but I think I'm going to leave it on Minmus as a tribute to to uh, Kerbal Insanity, and and they're paying us enough to do that. Uh, it's uh, the launch is only going to cost about forty. 40,000 funds and they're paying us something like 200,000 or something like that. So yeah, um, and they already paid us in advance. Uh, the, the, the rocket is really weird. Uh, we, we really don't need that big. Uh, the, the engine is so large that uh, that uh, any efficient rocket will, will be much smaller than the fairing. Uh, the, there's just no way to make uh, it because uh, the rocket is um, 3.75 meters. But it's just not that heavy, right? I mean, it's only 6.5 tons. So, uh, and we're talking about Minmus here. You don't need much fuel to land on Minmus. This is already way overdoing it. 
So yeah, no matter what I do, the launch stage will be really, really tiny. I don't know if it's going to be aerodynamically favorable, but uh, we're going to find out. And in fact, uh, wow, the fairings cost a lot. Actually, it's almost, uh, it's 46,000 now, but uh, just with the fairings added. But uh, yeah, I, we, we've got enough funds that uh, if it turns out that things go horribly wrong, we could launch again and still have enough money. Uh, the launch stage is not going to make it all the way to orbit, but we've got enough delta V on the rest of it to make up for that. So it's just going to uh, burn up in the atmosphere. Okay, so let's go on with this. Okay, yes, this is strange. Uh, sometimes Kerbal forces me to do things that I would not otherwise do, and this is one of those times. Here we go. Let's hope the payload started up properly. Well, operating exceptionally well so far. Uh, I wouldn't say looking good so far, but uh, operating within design parameters. Well, I almost can't believe that this is actually working. I'm anticipating some sort of issue at some point. I wonder when that's going to happen. We do have a large reaction wheel on it, so that is helping. We can dump the fairings now. Okay, we can coast. Okay, that's that stage. Hopefully this stage doesn't take too long. I think I overestimate how much we could get out of the launch stage. Well, we can uh, get solar panels out right now. Okay, that will have to be good enough. Okay, I badly un estimated this whole thing. It, it's really the launch stage I messed up on. Wow. By the way, the the launch stage was actually sized. There are limits to the procedural tanks that I face right now, and launch stage was just the largest I could make one of those tanks, and so it was somewhat arbitrary. Okay, well I'm gonna do this approach first. Okay, approaching. Okay, we've got an encounter. I'll I'll do corrections to it. We've got 400 delta V left. I don't know if that's going to be enough to land on Minmus. We'll see. Probably going for a crash course and just burning at the last, you know, doing a suicide burn will probably be the best way to go, given this situation. OK, 
Okay. Critical correction burn. Well, 12 kilometers sounds okay. We can easily make a crash course from that. Okay. Continuing. 378 meters per second left. Okay, well, here we are. And we're already going pretty fast, as you can see. I don't know how I'm going to be able to touch down like this. There we go. Suicide burn countdown. Gear down. And now it is us versus Minmus. Wow, we don't have any spare Delta V at all. Uh, okay. What are the chances it's not calculating this right? Probably pretty high, huh? Well, here we go. I'll give it an extra 15 seconds. Yep, no. no. Probably just... We've got nothing to spare here. And the terrain looks absolutely horrid. Surface, we need surface. Still going too fast. Here. Oh, uh, I was looking at the wrong altitude. Shoot. Okay, well that's that. Uh, let's try and weather it as much as possible. Oh, bugger. Okay, uh... Ah... Uh. I remember this sort of thing with Gilly. Uh, how did I manage it with Gilly? I don't even remember. Not like this, probably. How we landed? What does it say? Come on. Okay, it says we landed. Contract fulfilled. <laughs> oh dear. This is the craziest contract fulfillment ever. Okay, we did it. Barely. Alright. Uh, and this is going to remain on Minmus as a monument to Kerbal craziness. Okay, so uh, back to the Space Center. Okay, uh, let's see what we can unlock with that sort of stuff. We've already fulfilled two contracts. What I really want is the large docking ports. Let me hunt for those. Are those even visible yet? I don't even know which... Technology, uh, yeah, Clampatron Seniors. 
Okay, well that's what I want. Uh, station building. This is this is what we need. Okay. So we've got uh, station building abilities. And, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm confused because uh, this isn't hard mode. This is uh, uh, regular mode. Normal mode uh, 0.25, so I don't have to unlock the parts individually. All right, uh, I believe we have some other contracts to fulfill. Let me see what I can do about that. I just noticed something interesting. This I have not seen before. I don't know which mod it comes with. It seems like it's a minor improvement over the Poodle, uh, though it has less thrust at the same mass, so it has lower thrust to weight ratio, only a little bit more vacuum ISP, a lot more. Uh, sea level ISP, but it's nice and flat. That's uh, positive, I suppose. Anyway, uh, I'm going to be testing the turbojet this time, and of course we have to ignite it at uh, altitude. So unfortunately, we can't use it to bring it up there, and I don't want to waste money on a full, um, what should we call it, plane. So I'm just going to make a simple rocket, and it'll look a lot like uh, one of the previous ones we've done. Okay, I think this should be good enough. The key is that we need to achieve the kind of speeds that they want by the time we get to the altitude. So that's going to be one thing. But I think this is okay. We've got plenty of uh, thrust to weight ratio. Uh, uh, you note that I like the sort of Soyuz style thing and that's because first of all it's more streamlined uh, and second of all it gives you a obvious place to put the landing struts. I've uh, put the parachutes again and uh, hopefully this time I'll just uh, wait a little bit longer to deploy them and then that'll be okay. Alright, let's uh, get to work. Okay, we've got about uh, five minutes with battery life. I'm not sure if that's enough. We'll see. Let's go. Oh, I should note, this uh, center tank was not filled all the way, so that's why it seems like the liquid fuel is reading low. Now we have to hit 480 meters per second by the time we get to 18,000 meters. Should be alright. Okay. Okay, turbojet... Uh, Engine test completed. Excellent. Now we just have to... Uh, okay, well it's gonna make us drift a little bit it looks like. That's fine up here, just don't do too much of it. Uh, let me hit more atmosphere. And maybe we'll be clear of the KSC. Now that buildings explode, maybe it's not such a good idea to hit the KSC all the time. Okay, I really would like to flip around just a little bit more. And sort of keep it there. I don't have much by way of torque. I've got two minutes worth of battery life. I'll use what time I've got. Okay, well, parachute should definitely work now, right? No? Okay. Okay, well we got one out. That's nice. So what I'm gonna have to do it manually now. Okay, well that's the end of my battery power. Oh, it's still running the engine. No, that's not good. No, shut off the... Oh, crud. Hey, you're supposed to shut off the engine when there's no battery power, right? No? Oh, honestly, these things.
I should have shut down earlier anyway. Now we're we've got a complicated situation. Up oh, at least the parachutes didn't snap off yet. We've still got hope. Okay, full parachute deployment. Very respectable touchdown speed. Looks like I'm lucky this time. Okay, recover vessel. All right, and uh, we got 98% of the total value. That's good. And more importantly, the science. That leaves one more test, that structural pylon. Well, there's absolutely no reason to overdo things here. We've got the Rockamax 487S, which, as you recall, is the cheapest possible engine. Certainly. And uh, for because most of the mass, well, a lot of the mass is actually just structural pylons. They're 0.2 tons apiece. I needed to put two, and uh, just for balance sake. Otherwise, uh, we've got uh, one of the probodobodynes. I think uh, its own torque should be enough to control this. We'll see. It's a cheap test. And then just one parachute on the top. So it's staged like that. And all we need to do is splash down. So we don't have a very long trip ahead of us. Let's see how it works. Okay, here we go. SAS on. Throttle up. Tiny little thing. Makes me a little bit nervous. Alright, here we go. Okay. Well, I think we'll definitely be splashing down. We'll need to burn off the rest of the fuel so the parachute doesn't have too much work to do. Okay, parachute deployment. Okay, I've got a problem with parachutes. Uh, maybe I just need to update real shoots. There we go. Okay, we are splashed down, I think. Let's check, make sure it understands that. Okay, it took a little bit of time. And note, staging sequence. All right, here we go. They have been staged. All right, so that's that. Let's recover this. Okay, uh, we, we have a little bit more debris to pick up, but we'll do that some other time. Um, with that, uh, we have uh, more science, and I hope you enjoyed this uh, testing episode of the colonization series. In the next episode, we'll be working on our Earth orbit station, and that will be primarily, primarily a refueling station for the space tug that will be bringing payloads back and forth between Kerbin and the Moon. And uh, so, uh, it's it's separate from the Mu fuel depot. The fuel depot is more of an emergency depot, just in case things go wrong. Uh, the space station is uh, more of a regular refueling and uh, possibly repair and upgrading. I mean, now with, with a Kerbal attachment system, we can do all sorts of things. So uh, that's what we're going to be doing in the next episode is uh, building that station. Uh, I don't think uh, we have enough to unlock some of the other things I wanted just yet. So we will be looking forward to getting some more some more science also in the next episode I think. I've got more of these little... Uh, oh, uh, is it... Uh, I think maybe it's... Uh, I, I was wondering about that rocket that we unlocked, and I guess maybe it's part of the carbonite pack. Okay, that's interesting. So, yep, uh, station building next time. All right, and then maybe the space tug as well. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.